Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here, and welcome back, guys, for what is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily market update on this smashing Sunday. And as always, we have a hell of a lot to get into. This is going to be an interesting one. We're going to be talking about ISO 20022 cryptos to start the video off, because they are the ones that seem to be doing really well. Certainly, if you look at the gains over the past 30 days on the back end of a Trump victory, and actually these ISO 20022 standard cryptos are likely going to be the ones that play a major role in the new financial world that we're moving towards. Uh, we did an interesting XRP video yesterday where we looked at uh, Jane Fraser from Citibank talking about a once in a kind of lifetime shift that's happening with uh, finance and ultimately the kind of uh, underpinning of that with new technologies and what she's referring to there are distributed ledgers. So there's something amazing taking place. We're going to be starting the video off there. Then we're going to be diving over to a tweet from Donald Trump, who I believe is going to enable the cryptocurrency space, but not to do what it originally set out to do in regards to being an alternative to um, the um, traditional financial sector. Actually, it's very ironic, isn't it, that cryptocurrencies at this stage are playing more of a role or going to play more of a role in enabling the fiat systems um, than actually combating them. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that. You know, anybody that studied Bitcoin's history, it's amazing how little people know about this industry and where it came from and sort of what took place with Bitcoin and the potential um, hijacking, as Roger Ver would call it, but the um, essentially block wars that resulted in Bitcoin never actually being practically able to become a currency. Um, I mean, that could change in the future. Uh, obviously, they voted on smaller blocks over larger blocks. Larger blocks would have meant that Bitcoin could have scaled. And it was clearly Satoshi's vision to create a scalable peer-to-peer -peer currency. He wouldn't have created something with its max TPS, you know, something impactful with its max TPS around about two transactions per second. But We'll discuss all that when we get onto it. Uh, and then we're going to look at some news from Senate Limits. So with everything that Trump's saying and and, and, and what's coming, um, there's definitely going to be a Bitcoin and a crypto element in all of this. Um, and then we're going to hear some news from South Korea. They are uh, looking to delay implementation of crypto capital gains till 2025. In the UK, they're doing the opposite. We're all getting raked over the fires, but we won't um, divulge our political opinion in this video. Let's dive into it, guys. Uh, and I want to start things off with the top 30 gainers or the top few gainers over the past 30 days. And you'll notice Stellar Lumens is at 450%. I think I'm about 400% and I have a group of people that are all around similar. Obviously, we've got Hadira up 30, uh, sorry, 332% over the past 30 days, Algrand up 336% over the past 30 days, and XRP up 269%. Cardano also up 207%. And the interesting thing about Cardano, XRP, Algo, Hedera, and Stellar is they're all ISO 20022 compliant cryptocurrencies, which is essentially a standard that is used um, right now in the fintech world. Um, and ultimately, with this standard, so they create standards for certain things, and they'll then use those standards in regards to standardizing an industry if that makes sense so what they can actually use and what they can't use and they'll all adhere to those rules so this is something we're definitely going to be looking into you can see xrp cardano algo stella and hedera are all here you've got the others like xdc iota uh, and quant that recently took themselves off twitter i don't think that was the best move in the world given how <coughs> big crypto twitter actually is um but it's very interesting that your iso coins are doing well and i bring this up actually to highlight something also because as somebody like myself that's very into uh, lots of different sectors in the cryptocurrency space and why we hold as many cryptos as we do is because we understand that things are going to move at different times um, and ultimately right now obviously on the back end of the trump victory it's largely about iso kind of us sort of um related cryptocurrencies and we're very much seeing that shine through in regards to the ISO uh, standard cryptos and the cryptos that we look at. But there, are, there is going to be different narratives at different points. You know, AI is a big narrative. DPIN is a big narrative. DeFi, although I'm not investing in DeFi per se, I, I, I do think that will become a big thing, certainly with the kind of institutionalization of everything. Um, GameFi, you know, there's all these different narratives and there'll be like firing cylinders that they'll come in. So right now, the stars of the show really are, and we're very proud that we hold three of these. Um, 
and at other points have hold all of them. Um, the stars of the show right now are the ISO kind of American deemed cryptocurrencies. What I want to do now is bring up something interesting. And we'll read the CNBC article first. Trump threatens 100% tariffs on the BRICS block of nations if they act to undermine the US dollar. Now, it's very interesting, isn't it, that Trump, um, and, and we always said we thought Trump was going to win based on how markets were positioned. Even oil, I think, very much giving that away, what he's planning on doing with fracking. But even though Trump has been very much for, or, or, or certainly deemed very much for Bitcoin and the industry as a whole, um, he's a US dollar man. And the US dollar and Bitcoin are very much adversaries, in my opinion. In fact, Bitcoin was very much created to um, rival the US dollar as a currency. I think it's moved away from that and it's more of a store of value, essentially a bet against the US dollar, if you will. Um, so it's very interesting that despite how zealous he is on Bitcoin, he's very much a backer of the US dollar and ultimately would look to cause issues for anybody that sought not to use it. And I think for me, this really concretes Bitcoin's no longer role as an alternative to the dollar, more of an alter alternative store of value. Um, and actually something that obviously due to the rails that we're now going to have to be set up on Bitcoin to just make it scalable and, 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 and things like this, you know, it's largely been hijacked by the Institute. If it was if it was a real threat to the dollar, you wouldn't have the likes of Trump, who's obviously clearly demonstrating his zealousness for the dollar or his zeal for the dollar, um, you know, permissioning it in the way that they are all, all the likes of BlackRock's really the main benefits of the financial system doing what they're doing and of course they're now acting again as a middleman that satoshi vowed nobody ever to i think the bitcoin maxis are just it's just it's it's like you know the biggest circle jerk ever um so the idea that the BRICS countries this is from trump are trying to move away from the dollar while we stand by and watch is over well wow. We require a commitment from these countries that they will neither create a new BRICS currency nor back any other currency to replace the mighty US dollar. Or they will face 100% tariffs and should expect to say goodbye to selling into the wonderful US economy. They can go find another sucker. There is no chance that the BRICS will replace the US dollar in international trade and any country that tries should wave goodbye to America. Um, and it's very interesting, isn't it? We've got comments here from the likes of Dennis Porter saying Bitcoin will be the neutral financial layer between BRICS and US SWIFT. I don't believe that'll be the case. Um, I think they're gonna, it's very interesting how we've come to this sort of front in regards to the crypto space where actually now cryptocurrencies aren't doing what they set out to do they're almost doing the opposite they're almost empowering the fiat systems to more of a degree um and it just makes you wonder about a hell of a lot of things i was going to play a clip now of senator Lummis talking about um sort of strategic reserves for for bitcoin i, I think this is going to happen they do it with other commodities um i think they will do it with bitcoin um, but we, we'll skip that for the time being. South Korea, or the South Korea Democratic Party, agrees to delay implementation of the country's crypto gains tax in 2025 for another two years, going to 2027. Great news for all my South Korean uh, followers out there. Um, big shout out to you guys, and, and, and this is great news. You know, we've got, had countries like Italy that have been scalded with unbelievable taxes places in other places in europe in the uk we just had a rise in capital gains um, and then we've got countries like south korea and potentially america looking to do the exact opposite when it comes to the charts guys you all know the drill we're a little bit under the weather today so we're probably going to wrap things up sort of short and sweet um stick to the plan you know this market has a long journey ahead of it i will be doing a patreon update today um, where we'll be looking at bitcoin dominance because we can really derive a hell of a lot from that and it ultimately confirms uh, and gives us confluence in regards to technically what we're looking at across the board. So that is really it from me. Very interesting. Watch out for those ISO 20022 cryptos. We'll do a longer videos on there and start to sort of really educate people in regards to what exactly this means. And there was a paper circulating that actually there's going to be an implementation of this standard by 2025, the end of 2025, which would be interesting. Um, 
again, there's, there could be a Bitcoin dominance forecast in there in regards to Bitcoin dominance potentially going to 20%. And that's likely going to see an extended cycle for the crypto space as a whole. Uh, but that's for an entirely different video. Very interesting what we're getting out of Trump. Um, it's, it's almost kind of, what, what would be a good word here for this? Counterintuitive. Um, opposing. Uh, a million and one words that spring to mind in regards to these Bitcoin maxis promoting Trump as this like crypto savior, um, which he is in, in, in many regards, in regards to enabling it. Um, but in regards to them actually saying, okay, he, he, he's all for Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin's going to take over the world. It's going to do this. It's going to replace this. It's going to replace that. No, if it was and it was ever a true threat to their financial system, you kill a monster when it's small. Um, you don't allow it to grow large and then, you, and then you've got a real fight in your hands. Um, and they wouldn't have allowed Bitcoin to get this far if it was any sort of a real threat to the US dollar. I also think if you look into Bitcoin's history, what happened with the block wars was essentially uh, they ensured that Bitcoin would never actually be practically used as a currency. Store of value, it's done amazing. And as a result of that, it's done very well from a price point of view. Um, but in regards to the liberating factors that Satoshi thought he had brought to the table, uh, with an alternative currency system that people can transact with one another in, that dream is is very much a dead one for now. And it's the people that fought for the small blocks that essentially, in my opinion, and whether they were well-funded or whatever the, you know, there are there is, Roger Verse speculates on potentially some government involvement there. They've essentially ensured that Bitcoin will never actually be practically used as a currency and, and rival the likes of the US dollar and actually may it benefit it um, in, in, in a weird roundabout way. Certainly the other cryptos that have spawned out of this industry. Anyway, I'm rambling on now, guys. Like I say, feeling a bit under the way. So we're going to wrap the video up here. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you all in the next one.